Bull or bear? Oh, she throws down a bear. Let's see what happens tomorrow. Good evening. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. Got the uh, live Hillsborough Inlet cam up. And uh, you see my hand right there, my little cursor. If you look down here uh, where you don't see too many condos, that's where I'm sitting live at my... Actually, I'm waving to you. I don't know if you can see me on the camera. <laughs> Oh, beautiful evening out there, man. Our weather is just top notch. I think it's, uh, uh, what is it? Hang on, let me take a look here. Uh, again, that's the uh, live inlet cam in Hillsborough Beach. Um, not quite sure what the weather is. It's, uh, I think it's around 72 right now or 70 degrees. Again, just absolutely gorgeous. And man, what a great picture that is. Beautiful sunset we got going on behind us. And I uh, hope you're enjoying your evening as well. All right, well, let's get into uh, tonight's video and tonight's quote, which is, Poor planning on your part does not necessitate an emergency on mine. I love that quote. I saw it. Had a bunch of different ideas on the quote of the evening, but it's absolutely true. Unfortunately, in today's world, poor planning on their part does necessitate an emergency on us. I know uh, Bob Carter's words right here. I think he's a, a paleontologist and a couple other things. I looked him up. Usually I like to look up who I'm quoting just to make sure I'm not quoting some Nazi or something like that. <laughs> However, don't kill the messenger. Maybe even uh, those guys came up with uh, something was correct once in a while. Um, well, anyways, even a clock is right, what, twice a day, they say? All right, poor planning on your part does not necessitate an emergency on mine, and that generally can apply to uh, friends, family, and the people around us. Uh, but when it comes to uh, government, uh, banks, ec economies, and that kind of thing, it really doesn't apply uh, because their poor planning usually falls upon us, unfortunately. And how does this happen? Through, through unneeded, unnecessary wars uh, that do nothing but... <laughs> make certain people, make certain companies, you know, the, in, the industrial, uh, military industrial complex richer and richer, and the people that support them and invest with them richer and richer. Meanwhile, it makes the uh, rest of the world poorer and poorer and uh, drenches it in blood as well, all in the name of patriotism. That's exactly what we've got. You know, how many failed wars do we have behind us since uh, World War II? Uh, you know, Afghanistan, Korea, Vietnam, uh, you know, we can go on and on and on. The military seems to be more and more force working for uh, uh, um, the oil companies. I mean, take a look at Syria, what we've got going on over there. How many Americans have died in Syria needlessly? I mean, and that's not even declared an official war. That's just some kind of police action. I don't even know what you call it. But I digress. You know, I can really go off on the subject of wars because they're absolutely unnecessary, unneeded, and do nothing but bleed the average working class and literally bleed them, not only poor, but literally bleed them into the ground. Uh, sad shit we get going on, especially when, when you look at what's going on over on the, in uh, Eastern Europe uh, with us encouraging this current war with their, uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, not Again, you know where I'm going with this, but wars, man, it's, it's just bad shit out there going on. Uh, uh, and, it, and it's really poor planning. And maybe it's not poor planning, and uh, a, a lot of people w will say that, you know, this is excellent planning on their part. Uh, their plan to bleed the working class into the ground, bleed them economically, bleed them. And that's not just this country, it's all over the world. Uh, so wars is one way to do it. The economy is another way to do it. How do they do it through the economy? By poor planning. Poor planning by our central planners who would be government economic planners in the, uh, uh, the Fed Reserve and the banking system. Um, and again, they're not planners. They're people that are actually just looking out for their own best interests, not yours, not mine, because if they were looking out for your and my best interests, the planners would never allow this stuff to happen. Look at that poor, you know, this is just sad right here. I'm not quite sure what this has taken Afghanistan or Iran, but it'll be repeated over and over. And it's currently being repeated in Ukraine and Russia in such a huge, even a more, even more deaths, destruction and, and bad shit happening to good working people that are both Russian and Ukrainian as a result of uh, uh, greed and, uh, uh, man, just bad people. All right, well, I'm going to go on from there, you know, and, and Greenspan said it best here, in general, corruption tends to exist whenever governments have favors to extend or something to sell. That includes weapons, folks, and that's exactly what we got going on out there. Lots of bad shit, not to mention throwing a little moral uh, decay out there, lack of respect for the Constitution, 
and uh, 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 <laughs> moral decay. You know, who is morals? That's what some people will ask me sometimes. But there's basic morals out there. Thou shall not kill, I think, is a good moral uh, and a commandment uh, with, with at least a few religions. Thou shall not steal. I like that commandment as well. Um, you know, and, and there's a few others I can add on there too is, uh, you know, well, of course you know me, I believe taxation is theft, so that's stealing too. So there, I can jump down so many rabbit holes, but moral decay on a major level, uh, and, and this happens for so many different reasons. And again, dozen rabbit holes we can all jump down to there. And what does this all kind of culminate into? It culminates into crisis just ahead, folks. I know I just said a broken clock can be twi uh, right twice a day, but the truth of the matter is, is it really is not a matter of uh, not if this all, when, when the shit hits the fan, when the big collapse happens, when everything goes to hell, it's when. I mean, we've seen many versions of this, 2008, we've seen some economic collapses, but folks, you know, we're in for the mother of all collapse at some point here. I mean, I, I, and everything across the board is going to happen. It's going to seem like the world, 2008 for a lot of people, I mean, you know, uh, the world was going to end. You know, and really when we go back and we look on it, the world wasn't going to end. The, the, the way of life for the stupid bastards that ran it into the ground, including the bankers, the economic people, the political people, their life was going to end. Their, the way of living was going to end. Their bankruptcies were going to happen. They were going to be, it was going to be the end of them politically and economically. However, they found a way to bail themselves out using us, of course, the working class and all the people out there uh, uh, that work hard for their money. And when I say working class, I'm not, I'm not throwing rich people under the bus. There's a lot of rich people out there that work their asses off to get where they are. That includes billionaires, I believe, as well. <clears throat> you know, they just happen to be luckier and work their asses just as hard. You know, luck had a big component in that and being at the right place at the right time if you're a billionaire or a multimillionaire. But no less, I'm not going to throw all wealthy people under the bus because it wouldn't be fair. Uh, the people that I throw under the bus are the parasites and the predator, predators. Predators and parasites is who, and, and, um, uh, and, and people that, that uh, are, anyway, that, that's it, predators and parasites. You know, if, if you make your money being predatory or being a parasite, then I have very little respect for you. So, you know, there is a lot of working class people that have a lot of money out there and they don't deserve the dissing they, they get. Uh, but again, if, if you get your money by stealing from other people or, or being parasitic off other people, then uh, as far as I'm concerned, you can uh, take the uh, low road to hell. Uh, anyways, I was going to throw out a few other choice words out there, but too soon in the video. Not that I'm monetized, but I, I don't want to be thrown down the uh, uh, stairwell <laughs> into the basement by YouTube. Uh, uh, and you got to be careful what you say. But anyway, poor planning on your part does not necessitate, necessitate an emergency of mine. Uh, however, poor planning uh, by governments, bankers, people that, that, that when they make decisions uh, uh, directly affect us, uh, yeah, yeah, we're in trouble by those people. And again, the collapse that I'm talking about, the crisis that's ahead I'm talking about, it's not a matter of uh, if, it's a matter of when. How is that going to look? I don't know, folks. I think we're going to have a 2008 style collapse in a major way. Um, they're just juggling to keep everything afloat like they can right now. A lot of people believe there's a great reset and that this is all part of the great reset. I don't know what to believe about that. I mean, there's a lot of truth out there that they're going to try to put, push us into central bank digital currencies. Uh, whether that happens or not, I don't think so. I think, I, I think that Americans are just too damn independent. Uh, we love our independence. I mean, it's the one thing, well, most of us do. Oh, however, there's still a, a culture, a post-baby boomer culture, uh, and not all post-baby boomers, but there's a large post-baby boomer culture that's a bunch of pussies and uh, are not self-sufficient, are not able to uh, uh, take care of themselves and are, are dependent on government and basically parasitic uh, and maybe somewhat predatory as well. Uh, but anyways, let's talk about these different generations. And I'm not dissing everybody that's, there's a lot of bad folk that was in the, in fact, a lot of bad folk that run this country into the ground are from the boomer generation as well. So I'm not going to throw generations uh, under uh, uh, the bus here uh, uh, straight across the board. But, you know, we do seem, have, we do seem to have a steepening curve of uh, very not independent people that are post-boomers out there. Um, and uh, it's scary. It's kind of scary. And the truth of the matter is, U.S. birth rates, 50 to 2023, take a look at this. I mean, 
you know, this is the boomer generation right here. The boomer generation lasted to what, 1963, more or less there. And it was downhill from there. Well, this is such a huge population that's dying off right now. In fact, the boomer population is um, 60 plus, I would think. I think uh, if you're over 60 right now, you're part of the boomer population. And you, and getting old, man, getting older. I mean, the, uh, uh, the true boomers, uh, I won't say true boomers, but the boomers at the apex right here were post-war 1951. And uh, take a look at that. I mean, in, uh, if you, in 1951, you'd be uh, what? Uh, uh, 19, uh, hold on, you'd be, uh, say, 60, 70. Uh, you know, maybe uh, almost 70 years old. They're about, you know, high 60s, 70s is the, is the uh, apex of the boomer generation. And think about that, folks. That line goes down real fast. And where am I going with this? Well, these were the people that produced the greatest amount of wealth in this country. They really were, you know, real wealth, not derivative wealth, paper wealth, not uh, uh, bullshit wealth. Uh, uh, and really, that's what a lot of wealth is out there now, current new wealth, uh, nouveau money. Uh, but uh, uh, <clears throat> again, I don't want to digress here. Uh, but this generation is going away, and that has a lot of implications on a lot of things. You know, one of the big things I was talking about, uh, thinking about, is housing. Think about, you know, you know, in the next 10 years, the boomer population is going to be in a s steep, steep uh, decline. And there's so much real estate out there, and there's so many new people out there to suck up all that real estate and all that new housing that's been built out there. Um, unless prices come down in real estate. So I can see a major decline in real estate just because of the declining population and the boomer population. You know, I think, uh, what did I do it right here? Uh, my question is, is who picks up the slack here? You know, who is going to pick up the slack from the boomer generation? Who is going to pick up the taxes that were paid by one of the most productive profitable generations in history, which is the boomer population. And I'm not just talking about, you know, the ultra rich from the boomer population. I'm talking about the blue collar guys, your great grandfather, your father, your great grandfather, who slung a hammer and worked uh, 60 hour weeks to come home and, and buy a house and a, and a car and raise his kids, you know, or the electrician or the, or the store owner, the small business owner out there that did the same thing. These folks are going away real quick, folks. All you got to do is look at the statistics right here. You know, in the next 10 years, that, that line declines steadily. And again, less taxpayers, more dependents, because think about all these people that are on Social Security in the baby boomer generation, They're going to become more dependent on a smaller tax base. Listen, folks, the reality of the situation is we're, we're screwed in so many ways. We're screwed in the economy. We're screwed as far as hopefully we can get over this real quick. And, and, and unelect people like Lindsey Graham, unelect these Democrats and Republicans out there that are pro-war and don't mind sending your kids off to die and other kids off to die in foreign shitholes, you know. Um, <laughs> sorry, but I said it. And uh, there goes my views right there. <laughs> so uh, it's not if, it's when, folks. We are in the decline. We are in the decline from everything from a moral decline, a political decline, an economic uh, decline. We uh, uh, in a, in a uh, uh, age demographic decline, folks. It all culminates, comes together, and there is no question about this. There's no one to pick up the slack. It's not a matter if. It's a matter of, not a matter of when it happens. A matter, you know, or if it happens. It's when it happens. And man, I think the time frame is closing on that real quick. What does that have to do with the price of gold, silver, and platinum? Everything, everything. Because when the the shit falls apart out there. What has been around for 5,000 years, uh, longer than any country, corporation, fiat dollar, uh, politician, uh, uh, war, you name it. What's been out there longer than uh, 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 <laughs> Lockheed Martin and uh, uh, weapon, I mean, all right, I know, you know where I'm going with that. Uh, nothing. Gold, silver, and platinum is the one thing we know that's been around forever. And of course we know these markets are rigged, but they've been rigged to our favor. They've given us the ability to buy these commodities on the cheap for how long? Silver, four decades plus, as Ted Butler tells us. Uh, gold, uh, as well, I think, is on the cheap. And platinum. And this is real money. We talked about it this week. This is money that central banks own. You know, that, uh, you know, the, the same people that, that push you into uh, digital currencies, uh, you know, potential central bank digital currency, same people that push you into treasuries, bullshit paper derivative markets, are the same people that covet and hold gold. Uh, like United States. Well, I guess we hold gold in Fort Knox. I don't know. They, they probably snookered that off somewhere. But, uh, <clears throat> 
listen, folks, it's the place to be. It's all about hedging yourself against a falling dollar and a uh, falling economy and a, fall and, and, and a culture and people in decline in so many different ways. Uh, it's a safe bet, uh, whether it's for holding for yourself to make sure that you survive until you go, or even saving for your children and making sure they're okay in the future as well. Uh, but you know, you can't just give your kids gold, silver, and platinum. You've got to explain to them why they need to own it, all right? And that's what I help you with here occasionally, I, I think. Uh, best deals out there, folks. I'm not going to repeat the last three nights, the last two weeks. Uh, well, actually, premiums have dropped since last night. So if you want to know what premiums are, the best deals are in gold, silver, and platinum products, watch last night's video. Uh, I go over it. All you got to do is look for this picture right here and look for best deals or something like that. In my, uh, but it's the same thing as last night. Best deals are still the same thing. You know, uh, I'll update best deals a couple times a week rather than every night because it gets boring repeating the same old stuff every night, which is hard to do anyway with this market because it gets boring talking about these crooks and criminals in the Crimex market that manipulate these markets over and over. We talk about it after three years. Talk about trying to figure out new content, folks. You know, try doing one of these videos on gold, silver, and platinum. Uh, I will have to start talking about uh, rare coins and uh, other type items too because, man, I'm getting bored talking about these criminals. I'm getting bored talking about where this economy eventually is headed. It's the same old shit, folks, and they, you know, again, last night's video I think was doubled down on stupid. Uh, I'm going to go over uh, uh, questions. I would like answering comments because I can jump down rabbit holes, uh, quite frankly, and I enjoy the comment section. You know, as of right now, my video uh, uh, are still small enough and the comment section is small enough and my subscriber base is still small enough that I can actually answer you guys, uh, unlike a lot of uh, uh, videos out there. Newest first, uh, and again, I can imagine once you start getting thousands of comments, hundreds of comments, uh, you'll, uh, uh, it gets tough to do, but I can still do that. Why? Because I talk about politics and economics and my videos will never get a great amount of views because of that. I honestly believe that, folks. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind, uh, my mind that the, uh, uh, these folks right here stuff your videos if uh, you're not in a subject they particularly like. They have the algorithms to do it. They do it all the time. They claim that, remember when Twitter claimed they didn't do it, then all of a sudden we found out absolutely from the Twitter files, it absolutely happens. They do stuff you down somewhere where your videos don't get seen. I believe that happens to me because I do talk about sensitive political and economic content. Again, that's just my opinion. If I'm wrong, let me know what you think in the comments section. Rob F. It's even spooky now. How do you do it? You get number one all the time. Um, in fact, <laughs> it's, it's spooky. <laughs> I'm only kidding. I, I guess I, if, you, if you sit around and wait for my videos to come out, you can become first. Maybe you got a notification and you look and boom, you hit it just like that. But uh, congratulations on being first for the 180th time, Rob F. <laughs> Christopher McCormick. Um, noticing a lot of people selling the silver could be affecting premiums due to less demand. Uh, I haven't noticed very many people selling silver. Small, small amount of uh, uh, capitulation and silver sellers out there, Christopher. I'm not quite sure. You know, you did tell me you went to a coin show with four dealers. <laughs> and if you base your capitulation on that show, um, it might be a skewered a little bit to the uh, upside. So, no capitulation, folks. I, in fact, I haven't seen real capitulation since the 1980s market. Um, in any real significant way. Most people that buy silver understand its value, understand it being a hedge. They don't sell it. A lot of people plan on dying with it and giving it to their kids, you know, because they don't necessarily need the money. That's why they don't sell it. But they like to have it there, again, as security and as a hedge. Uh, Show Pro is first. Show Pro first? No, you're not first. Rob F. is first, I think. Oh, maybe not. Ah, I think I got them mixed up. I did the newest first. Hmm, still doesn't make sense. Anyway, Show Pro, I, I have to give it to you. Uh, Rob F. looks like he's a first, but what the hell do I know about uh, uh, how Y2 uh, YouTube uh, uh, comments work? Show Pro, nice to see a comment there. Uh, and uh, uh, Celtic Notch said gold is money, really, is, is credit except for silver. Yeah, we had that discussion before. Uh, appreciate you bringing that up again, uh, Mr. Celtic Knot. Uh, Mark Hammett says, new to buying silver, why should I buy silver for the market manipulate to keep the prices lower? Um, here, let's see who commented to you on that. Because, hey, great comment, DC, uh, DC, because they can't always get away with it. So we're buying as it's being manipulated before. It's not true. It's a hedge. Everything in life is a risk. Good answer as well, Crip Blood. And Jan C says, we've been saying this for years and nothing changes. Well, of course it changes over time. Again, think about this. You know, we're all expecting a double up, triple up, quadruple in silver, and it's going to happen at some point. It's not a matter, like I said back here, of if 
It's a matter of when. And if we knew how to time that stuff, we'd all be super rich, all right? Myself, yourself, everyone. You know, we just don't know when to time. We don't know uh, when they are not going to get away with it anymore and when the uh, physical markets start to uh, wag, you know, as I said in the past many times, when the uh, 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 tail stops wagging the dog and the tail is the Crimex derivative Comex paper markets. That's the tail. And who's the dog? The dog is the physical market. So when the tail stops wagging the dog is when we'll see significant gains in prices. And when is that going to happen? You tell me. We'll throw all our money together and we'll all go buy a bunch of islands out in the Pacific or wherever your favorite place is. Hey, uh, thanks for watching, Mark. Don't worry about it. Keep stacking. You're safe at the very least. And all of us will wake up and have our oh shit morning. That's, that's when you wake up in the morning, you look at the price of gold and silver and you go, oh shit, what happened? Uh, I've seen it to the downside too. So, But I don't think, I think we're going to see some more monkey hammer coming up, but I think that we're all going to see that uh, oh, oh crap moment in the morning uh, uh, to the upside. Uh, and it won't be too far off in the future, I believe. Uh, DC says, uh, gold, my favorite silver, has so much potential. Yes, Daisy, I agree with you 100%. DC says, I wish I was close to Florida so I could buy from your shop instead of out here. I'm in uh, Washington State. I think you are. These guys seem shady as hell. <laughs> okay. Hey, listen, uh, keep commenting. If I notice you're, you're missing, we'll uh, put a uh, missing persons alert out from you uh, because of your shady guys out there. But yeah, it's, it sucks, man, not having a good local dealer. You know, and here, here's where I can go into my spiel right now. If you live in South Florida, uh, make sure you visit us at Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals because we'll beat Atmax SDJ and Bullion on their prices and all the local guys down here. And if you don't live in South Florida, I haven't figured out a way to ship small quantities of gold and silver yet out of state or out of my area uh, to people and do it on a competitive level. But if you're buying more than 100 ounces of gold, more than 1,500 ounces of silver, I can beat the pants off your local guy probably and Atmax SD and J and Bullion as well. So uh, give us a call and uh, uh, here, that's at the end of the video right here. Wow, I just did my little spiel here real quick, and thank you for allowing me to do that, DC. Um, yeah, long distance sales. No, I don't think I'm going to do long distance sale uh, unless I can do it in larger quantities or figure out how to do it over the phone. I just don't have the time nor the resources I want to spend on building a website and competing against Atmax, SD, and JM Bullion. That's, you know, that, that click and buy stuff is a Man, that's a very expensive field to be in. Trust me, you know, they have big expenses running those sites, and they're not easy to do, and uh, I have enough to do already with a brick and mortar. I'm going to stick old school brick and mortar, but, you know, I can, I can, do, uh, I can uh, ship stuff old-fashioned bank wires and all that stuff as well. So if you guys are buying larger quantities, you don't mind doing bank wires, uh, waiting for me to get paid before I lock in something, then uh, definitely give me a call. Uh, keep stacking there, DC. No worries. You got it covered, dude. You know, you do what you can and uh, keep putting uh, uh, your money in bullion. I don't think you're uh, ever going to regret it. And that's just my opinion, of course. Uh, Canadian Mint, one ounce bar is uh, $44.99 over spot. Any quantity? Yeah, I've seen that show, Pro. There's uh, occasion SD, Atmex, JM Bullion will do like, you know, they're kind of like lost leaders where they'll, you know, the nice thing about if you sell some gold and silver and you get new customers, you know what I'm saying? So they'll run specials out there, they'll lure in some new people out there, and again, it adds to your customer base, which is a great thing. And you know, occasionally I'll run some specials here on some stuff when I get overloaded a little bit in certain products. Uh, but Royal Canadian Mint 1 ounce bars for $44.99 on a spot, uh, that's a great deal right there. And I don't think I have any Royal Canadian uh, uh, 1 ounce mint bars right now, so I'm not quite sure how long that's going to last. Let's see what happens. Uh, and again, it depends on the number of uh, ounces they're willing to sell, too. I think that I could easily sell uh, uh, one ounce bars for uh, 50 bucks an ounce uh, uh, in larger quantities for sure. Uh, we could get that price down as low as that and probably even less in larger quantities. But, you know, if they're selling them in onesies and twosies for $44.99, that's a loss leader and a good deal for you guys out there if you want to pick a few off. I'm never, never afraid to point out that uh, that uh, a competitor has a good deal. Um, anyways, thanks for watching Show Pro. Appreciate it. Hermosa Beach guy says, any good resource to find coin shows near me? Hmm. Uh, you got me on that one. I think uh, Coin World uh, uh, Online, or maybe uh, one of those kind of publications, does have a section where they list all the coin shows across in the different states and where they are and when they're coming up. Might be a good place to look, Hermosa Beach guy. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Appreciate that, and good luck finding a good coin show near yourself. Uh, American Silver Eagles on the radar buying a few tubes. They're still overpriced, uh, FTX for life. They still really are overpriced, but uh, 
Uh, you know, to own a few, the prices are uh, cheaper than they have been. But man, I still hate the Silver Eagle price. Spot plus nine or 10 bucks, it's ridiculous, man. It's not an investment. It isn't. You're never going to get that money back. I'm sorry, but it's true. Um, well, I don't mean to diss Silver Eagles. I love the product. I just don't like the premium. Uh, Rick Rayborn says a lot of weapons are going to the black market. Can't argue with that. Uh, my understanding in Ukraine that uh, none of the, you know there's no accountability for uh, the billions and billions of weapons that they sent down there. I mean, it's funny. Prior to uh, the uh, invasion, the so-called invasion, well, it wasn't an invasion. Prior to the Russian invasion, which was really caused by you know us and NATO and other issues out there. Uh, you know, no one trusted that country. No one trusted Ukraine. It was all over the news, and you know, uh, even people that now uh, uh, glory to Ukraine and have the uh, yellow and blue flags on their Twitter sites. E e you know, <laughs> even uh, those people uh, recognize that it was a corrupt country before then. So, I mean, what do you call this cognitive dissonance? You know, all of a sudden everything's changed. On, you know, it just doesn't make sense to me either, Michael. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, Lewis uh, says. Uh, or Lois, I'm sorry, Lewis, I'm sorry, uh, says, I sure hope I'm still alive when they do go up. You will be. Relax, Lewis, you're fine. Uh, trust me, you're going to see it. I don't think we're too far. We're all going to have our oh shit uh, moment in the morning. Uh, I'm pretty confident about that. Kim says, why don't you list premiums on YouTube? I do, I did. <laughs> Oops, you did, I know. I do. I'm going to do it a couple times a week at least or when there's any major updates. So if you want to know one thing that I can do better than all the YouTube talking heads out there, I can let you know what the best deals out there. And I'll do that at least a couple times a week or during any major updates uh, when it comes to prices. Linda Compton says, choose a statement at the beginning. Yes, I love the underwater pictures. Thank you. Um, choose statement at the beginning. You lost me on that one, Linda, and, I, and you love the underwater picture. I do, too. I really do. Uh, YFZ Moto says I dump 80 rolls of 40% lot. That's a great deal. Uh, dump your 40% uh, and turn it into a three ounces of gold. I think that's actually a better deal. You know, 40% is very heavy and uh, lots to carry around there. Derek says he loves the F-bombs, makes it entertaining, informational, fun video. If it offends someone, grow up or move on. Uh, I, I, I do, too. That's more of a, I don't say them just to get a reaction. I say them because I feel it. <laughs> I throw out my profanities because I'm feeling and I'm feeling emotional about something, and that's true, you know, and maybe that's the way I kind of express it. Uh, but uh, uh, this channel doesn't like it, man. They're even coming out, they're uh, demonetizing people because they're throwing F-bombs and stuff like that. Fortunately, I don't care about monetization. I'll take it if they give it to me. It, it kind of makes me chuckle. You know, I'm, I'm <laughs> getting paid for doing advertising uh, on their uh, uh, site, but uh, uh, they are very strict and they are uh, anti-First Amendment in my opinion, but uh, no less, you know, listen, I got to live by their rules. They're going to push my videos down a rabbit hole because I don't do what they say. I don't care. I'm enjoying doing this no matter what comes out of it. Uh, and I hope you guys enjoyed it as, as well. And. Uh, uh, Pete says, I uh, find that we've been lied to all over the carrot just out of reach. My great grandpa would try to work us to death in the hay ruck farm fields by making a daily stop at the local service station and buy one pint of ice cream with two little wood spoons. He'd cut in half with his pocket knife. Whoever he thought worked the hardest that day would get the other half. Uh, <laughs> wow, that's pretty rough. Your grandfather was a tough, hardworking guy, man. Got to give you that, Pete. Uh, big respect to grandpa. I mean, uh, you know, it may have created a little uh, mental stress there with the youngins, but, <laughs> and it probably did, man. But, you know, you got to remember old school peeps like that, your grandpa and your father. Um, you know, same thing with me, man. They weren't perfect people. Uh, they, they worked hard. They come from a different generation. They, and some of them had a rough upbringing themselves. But, uh, you know, there's one saying that I do remember uh, I always liked by Robert Heinlein that says, keep your children short on pocket chains and long on hugs. And hopefully your grandfather kept you guys long on hugs and really loved y'all, even though he did keep you short on the pocket change and work your asses off. So, uh, a different generation, man. Can't argue with that. Thanks, Pete. Appreciate your commenting. JTBSK2, how you doing? Gold coins to you as well. Just checked online. Definitely can't get on Circulate Eagles for less than I could last. Um, price has gone higher. You know, that's surprising because the wholesale sell price has gone lower. You shouldn't be paying any more than uh, 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 10 bucks over, at, you know, 11 maximum, uh, spot plus 11 or, you know, 10 or 11 bucks maximum for Silver Eagles right now. If you're paying more than that, I think you're paying too much. I can sell them to you cheaper than that, although I don't want to because they're still overpriced. Uh, thanks, uh, O. Appreciate you commenting. Or is it zero? I'm not quite sure. Like them both. Uh, Shep says LMU, Latin Monetary Union. Lost me on that one, but. Uh, 
You're probably going to make me look it up now that you said it, and there I go. I'm cutting and pasting. I'll look it up. Thanks, Shep. Appreciate you commenting. William says, um, yeah, can't argue with that. You know, everybody's got to have something to look, you know, and, and it's nice, William, that you found uh, your uh, shepherd, you found your, uh, uh, your place uh, to go. And uh, I'm not going to argue with that as well, you know. Uh, everybody has an opinion, and uh, uh, again, uh, uh, see, in God we trust. Uh, you know, I, I, I often, I don't talk about religion much. I'm an agnostic, so to speak. I admit that I don't know for sure. That's the science part of me. Uh, however, I acknowledge that there's something bigger than myself out there potentially as well. I just don't know. Don't know his name, don't know her name, don't know its name, don't think about it really. I do think about it, but uh, uh, I, I suspect at some point in my life uh, I'm going to find out soon enough and uh, I'm going to cover all my bets. <laughs> Welco, what's up? Uh, James Everett, uh, what's up with you as well? A stable medium of change is more. I think that's the good thing about gold and silver. It is a stable medium of change. Uh, thanks, James Everett. Uh, uh, FOMO, Popo AZ says, uh, war is a good thing, so the military complex hires people. We can dump out equipment. Uh, if you're talking about last night's video, which I think you are, I was being sarcastic about that. War is not good. As you watch this video, you'll see that. I don't think it's good at all. You know, you know it's a... <sighs> The, the destruction and the death in the, in the uh, uh, use of resources that could be used for something far better is not good, period. There's no such thing as a good war economically or any reason whatsoever, you know, because wars are ultimately fought by the working class people, the white collar, the blue collar, it's, 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 and it's usually profited by large corporations that make the weapons that we go to warfare with. You know, as um, uh, Eisenhower warned us about the military-industrial complex, and we failed to heed. Uh, again, another rabbit hole I could go down there as well, and I think you're with me 100% on that. Buyback stocks. Thanks for watching. First time you see a comment there. Appreciate you watching. And, uh, everyone out there, appreciate you watching, hitting that uh, like and subscribe button as well. Uh, gold is, I, you know, I, I believe that as well, buy stocks. I think you're right on the money there for sure. Uh, Bill St Philip Stanton says, give us a sense of the coin market at the fund and at your shop. What would you say of three coin designs people are searching for the most? Hmm, three coin designs. Um, you know, I can't pick three coin designs. I can say that, you know, people pick series and coins that they like. Some people like Morgan Dollar. Some people like uh, uh, modern commemorative. Some, you know, and there's a huge growing amount of people out there that love modern silver rounds and modern silver uh, uh, bars, and they collect all these different bars and rounds. I guess it's another form of stacking. I'm seeing a lot of that out there as well. Um, the coin market is good. Uh, rare coin market is good. Uh, what I noticed at the fun show is that the uh, service industry, the coin market, is just crazy. Um, you know, one thing I'm, I like coin grading services, uh, and don't get me wrong, I'm not dissing them. I think they serve their place, but there's just too much money spent on coin grading. There's too much money spent with these services. Way too much money. You know, uh, collectors have gotten lazy, in my opinion. They rely on coin grading now. In my day, there was no coin grading. In coin grading, you had to learn on your own, and it had to be a consensus between you and the seller. You don't have that anymore. You have people that, the only way they know how to grade a coin is if they see it written on a piece of plastic that they trust. And you know what? I think that's bad. I think it sucked a ton of money out of the business, and maybe I'll do a video on that sometime as well. I uh, hope that gave you a little coin insight there. Thanks for watching, Phil. Appreciate it. I think platinum will break the crime X market soon. I can't argue with that, as will silver. Thanks, Christina. Hope you're having a good evening. Coin collecting, fun. Uh, I like that name. What a great name. Thank you. Big like 135. Thank you so much for sharing. You too, man. Uh, Jacob Lopez says, any comment on whether a trillion dollar platinum coin would have any effect on the... Um, no. It would just be a, a high price shiny fiat uh, platinum coin. <laughs> what does it mean? Really? You know, no, I don't think so at all. I think it's just a gimmick uh, thought. Uh, but interesting, they've been talking, that's been around for like 10 years now, some, you know, talking about a trillion dollar platinum coin. Uh, but anyway, interesting stuff. Thanks for bringing it up, Jacob Lopez. Uh, Rich says, go Russia, India, China, take delivery crush exchanges they don't have. You know, some reason, uh, I can't argue with that. Uh, but on the other hand, too, I, I think all governments are inherently evil, even these ones right here. Um, and ours as well, you know. Uh, so I can't say go to any particular government because I think really ultimately governments don't rule for the people. They rule for a small class of people, including in these countries right here. 
Uh, let me move on from there. Hey, Rich, thanks for commenting. Appreciate it, too. Uh, Don Frias says, here's my opinion. The, the central banks need to crash the gold and silver to write off paper, after which people hold the real stuff would do well. Opinions. Um, I think we're going to do well, and I think they're going to crash it on their own. I think that fiat dollars have no way but down. We are the longest-lasting fiat currency in history, and history tells us that no fiat currency survives uh, uh, the way it started out, that's for sure. Um, have it in your hand. If you don't hold it, you don't own it. I agree 100%. Thanks for commenting, Don. Scott says, until they stop manipulating silver and gold, we'll never know what the real price it is. Um, yeah, kind of. Um, boy, that's such a complicated, loaded question, but Scott, we're on the same side, can't argue with you. Uh, Paul Zabo says, hi, Brian uh, uh, Zabi, uh, Brian Zabi from Northern Goldfields, Northern, went to, to Technia, say, holy shit, uh, found me dug up a tobacco tent once inside of mint condition, 1797 Brittany, have done some research. That's pretty cool, first copper penny where this one comes. Uh, can't find much info on it, your opinion, please. Um, Email me pictures at Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals. Um, email pictures there, and I have my friend Bill Hussey, who's a pneumatic, pneuma, numismatic financial galleries. He's a wonderful um, uh, foreign coin uh, dealer. And if you email me pictures at Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metal at gmail.com, uh, I'll show him the pictures and, and uh, have him get back to you. How's that, Paul? Hope I can help you there. And good find there, dude. Keep looking. That's a great hobby. Well, that's it, folks. This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals. If you live in South Florida, uh, come visit our brick and mortar. We've been here since 1995 in this location. And uh, there's our phone number, 954-493-8811. We're open 10 to 4, Monday through Fridays. Again, this is a brick and mortar location. You can buy anywhere from uh, dollars worth to millions of dollars worth of gold, silver, and platinum from us. Happy to help you out. We'll beat the locals and the big online guys as well. Big online guys as well. We also do rare coins, paper money, and other cool stuff as well. And again, don't forget to uh, find me. To, I'll be in the Lakeland, Florida at the uh, RP Funding Center, February 16th to the 18th at the Collectorama Show. Get your free tickets here and make sure you uh, come by and uh, see all kinds of cool stuff. Collectibles, antique weapons, fossils, stock certificates, coins, silver, gold, platinum. Oh my. <laughs> hey, that's it. Thanks for watching. Have yourself a wonderful evening and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye now.